My guy, what's up, what's bro? What's going on, bro? How you feeling? I'm good, good. You? Oh, good, bro. Can't complain. I feel you, man. How are everybody doing? Everybody good? Everybody safe? Everybody straight, bro. You know, okay. one day at a time. You know how it is. How are everything on your end? Oh, we good, man. We know we stand out the way, man. If we ain't got to do too much, we ain't doing too much, you know? I already know. I already know. But, yeah, man, thank, thank you for, for joining me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Definitely an honor to have you on here, man. You know, so like I said, thank you for taking time out your day to join me, bro. Yeah, for sure, man. Thanks for having me on. All right, so uh, we're going to get right into it. All right, so question one I ask everybody is, who is the GOAT, MJ, Kobe, or Brian, and then put them in order? Oh, put them in order? Yeah. That's tough, bro. You starting off hot. Uh, yes, sir. No, I mean, going to my head, if I had to put them in order, I'd probably go – Mike, mm-hmm. Mike, Kobe, LeBron, if I had to. Yeah, yeah. But I usually go, I usually say, like, I'm a big era guy, right? So, yeah. you know, if, if you know, Kobe the best in his era, Mike the best in his era, LeBron yeah. in his era. Yeah. If you put them in any of the other ones, they dominate either way. Facts. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You can't go wrong with any order, bro. Yeah, so that's you how I look at it. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I'm partial to Mike, so. Okay. That's just, that's just that'd be my pick if I had to. Okay. Okay. Uh for you, who's your favorite NBA player right now that you would like watching? I mean, right now, I love Kawhi. Yeah. Uh, just cuz he get after it on both ends. Yep. Uh he still stick to the two. Um you know what what a game is all going to the three ball, he still stick to his bread and butter. Yeah. Um so that's why I would go with probably Kawhi, but if like personal, uh I mean, I'm big on Eric Blesso. Not as, yeah. like, a favorite guy, but just yeah. as far as who I watch a lot of. Yep. Uh, somebody who solid, stick to his role, hit shots, tough. Yeah. So, you know, I like I like Blesso and then and then Dame. Like, yeah. Dame is just doing his thing right now, but this ain't nothing new. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That so, yeah, yep. three for sure. Yeah, that was definitely my next question. Um, like, So who was your favorite player growing up that you, like, enjoy watching Growing up, I was big on Ginobili, Manu Ginobili. Oh, nice one. Just because yeah. lefty, um, mm-hmm. real crafty with the ball around the rim, footwork. Yeah. Pass it, you know, could shoot it, could pretty much do everything. So I was big on Ginobili for sure. Um, and then I was a little bit into Allen Iverson, but I never could have that same swag as him. So yeah, <laughs> like, I was like, I'm going to just stick with Ginobili. Um, yeah. Kind of put as much of him in my game as I could. Facts. Can't go wrong with Ginobili, man. Ginobili, the truth. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, right now, bro, give me your top five players in the NBA. Everybody healthy. Everybody healthy. Everybody healthy, uh, bro. Let me hear what you got. Uh, no order. I would go LeBron, KD. Mm-hmm. I would go Kawhi, Harden, and Steph. Ooh. Um, I feel okay. like... I feel like if you put them five, well, obviously they won't have no big. But if you put them five together, yeah, I think they they could they could do some things. Um, I think they all in their own lane. Yep. Uh, obviously, Steph has probably had the most the biggest impact recently, as far as on basketball. Um, nice. Brian, you know you know what he do. I think KD at his size. Yeah. Being able to basically be a guard at his and size. Yeah. Um, and then Harden, the way he could score the ball, another lefty. And then, like I said, Kawhi, you know, the way he get after it. Um, as far as mold, I think Kawhi is probably next in line after after that Mike Kobe, you know, that mid post. Yeah, that, definitely. Uh, you know, the fadeaway, using the fadeaway to his advantage. You see him mm-hmm. doing it now. So, yeah, yeah, I'll probably go them five for sure. Okay. Um, so, who you got winning it all this year? Kind of scary, man. man. Everybody look a little bit off, man. So yeah, I know. Of... I was about to say, ain't nobody really standing out right now. Um, yeah. But, I mean, since the beginning of the year, I've been big on the Clippers. Um, yeah. I think they got, what, four or five guys that can play the wing, but play all multiple positions, guard multiple positions, score it. Yep. Um, they got uh, a, a defensive team. They get after it. You know, you got Pat Bev at the head of it all. Um. I think they got they got rebounding. They got you know they got a closer in Kawhi. Mm-hmm. Um, their biggest question mark is though would be if, if PG could get himself going, you know yeah. that that that'll do it. But right now, like I said, nobody really looking too too hot right now. You know, um, yeah, it's in know, the air I, right now. Yeah, I don't really believe in none of the East teams like that. 
Um, oh, you don't believe? I believe in Toronto, man. They got that man. They just won last year. Yeah, you know what I'm nah, saying. They, yeah, you lost your two best players almost, but yeah, man, with, with Fred and Kyle, man, the way they playing yeah. right now is unbelievable. No, nah, no, nah, no doubt. Like I love, I love the Toronto. Um, yeah, as far as like they guard, mm -hmm. they they play fast. Um, for me though, they if you lose your closer, it's gonna be tough. You know, yeah. that for me, um, Kyle yeah. Lowry is a good player. Uh, Siakam's an All Star. Yeah, but Kawhi was that closer, so yeah. um, I yeah. think if you lose him, it's tough for the Bucks. I like the Bucks; they got size, they got length, they guard too. But yeah. Giannis, to me, I'm not really all the way sold on Giannis as far if as you stop him from him. driving, bro. You got the game won. Yeah, yeah. So I think everybody's gonna pack it in on Giannis. Yeah. Um, and then as far as like Boston, I feel like they just they inconsistent. Mm -hmm. Um, but they good too. But you know, I think it's gonna be one of the LA teams if I had to pick. Okay. It's all, yeah, I think it's one of the L.A. teams. Okay, okay. Um, for you, bro, you got a favorite basketball moment for yourself? Uh, man, if I had to – it's hard to pick one. I think mm -hmm. winning state my senior year in high yeah. school was big. Um, I think going to the tournament my sophomore year in college was big. Uh, I would probably say one of those two just because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm big on being a winner. Yeah. Um, stats is stats is one thing, but I'm big on being a winner. I think uh, for me to at St. Joe's, the team we had, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and plus that was Ping's last state championship. Yeah. You know, uh, rep, God rest his soul. But yeah, rest in peace, um, Ping, man. I think I think that was that was big, and then obviously in uh, at Northwestern being the first team to go to the tournament in school history. Yeah. I, that's something that you can always hang your hat on for sure. Uh, Thanks. You know, I think that those two. Um, obviously, St. Joe's, I had a bit more of an a, a impact on the court. Yeah. Um, but Northwestern, I think I was like a leader on that team. I had a big part of, you know, the, how, how the locker room was, um, how guys stayed together. I think that was big. So I'll probably go one of those two for sure. Okay. I was like that. Um, let, me see. let me see. What's the most points you've ever scored in the game before, bro? Uh, I mean, going back. I mean, I think I had a I had a thirty nine in middle school. I had a, I had a 56. In I had a fifty six in middle school. <laughs> but like them is like you know what I mean I would say um, I'll just probably take my thirty. I had at St. Joe's just because mm. that was more like you know I was yeah. older. Yeah. Uh, obviously, if you're talking about numbers, then yeah, fifty six. But I was like a shorty, so like yeah. everybody everybody was getting off when they were the shorty. <laughs> okay, who was that? Who was that thirty that thirty ball on in high school, bro? Uh, we played, uh, was it St. Francis de Sales? It was a regional game. Uh -huh. My senior year, actually. Yeah, the year we won state. It was a regional game. I had 30, yeah. That I man I'm putting up numbers. Yeah, for sure. Had All to. Right. All right, now I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot with these next few, bro. All right, come on with it. All right, give me your favorite teammate of all time. Oh, you really did put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could name a couple, bro, give me a couple. I'll make it a little bit lighter for you. Uh, no, nah, for real, on some real stuff, though, probably my favorite teammate would probably be Glenn Watson, bro. Um, I knew it, yeah. Uh, I that mean, boy, Glenn. Yeah, I mean, like, I played – it's a crazy story, though. I played with him when I was in seventh grade. Uh, we yeah. was in seventh grade out in Bolingbrook. We played in, like, one tournament together. And I'm like, man, this dude ain't – he ain't yeah. like that, bro. You know, he ain't. But yeah. as we got older, we played, we played together in eighth grade. And from that yeah. on, we played year-round for five years. And I think just, first of all, the bond we had off the court, <clears throat> it kind of grew to the point where we had trust in each other on the court, but also it was like I knew if I needed a killer, I had a killer. Yeah. You know, um, there was plenty of games where I couldn't get it going and he carried us. Yeah. Vice versa. Um, he was the first dude that, as a, as a shorty, he kind of challenged me on the court. <clears throat> I was able to check in when I needed to. We held each other accountable. Yeah. And then, you know, and then we played against each other in college. You know what I mean? So I think just having him, I think, kind of grew me as a person and player for sure. Yeah. Um, and then I think as I got older, Derek Pardon, who was a big man in Northwestern, he was my roommate for four years. Um, just watching how he grind, how he got, how he got to where he got to. Yeah. And then growing into an all-Big Ten player. And now he playing professionally in Germany. I think, you know, just learning from him how he kind of went about his business, being a mm -hmm. professional from day one. 
Yeah. Um, and then being my guy, you know, I think. So probably them two. If I had to pick, you know, there's a lot of guys, man, that I still yeah. real close with, like Vic and Scotty. Mm -hmm. um, those was my guys. You know, I had a lot of guys. But those two, I think, you know, I was the closest with, for sure. Okay, okay. Now, give me your funniest teammate you ever had. My funniest teammate? Uh, uh, who, who was the goofball around y'all? <laughs> it was a lot, bro. It was a lot. Uh, I think funniest, I mean, Glenn is a funny dude. Um, yeah. But I actually had a dude who got, like, comedy in his blood. Uh, he was a walking one at Northwestern, Charlie Hall. His mom is Elaine from Seinfeld, Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Wow. And he was constantly, man, just, just trying to trying out new <laughs> stuff on us, man, doing goofy stuff. Uh, Barrett Benson was a goofball. Yeah. Uh, man, I had a lot of dudes, man, just, just like funny dudes, man, just in their own way. Okay. Um, now, this question, bro, <clears throat> what was that – you could do the most recent, you could do the most memorable, however you want to do it. Who was that one person that gave you work that you was just guarding? He was like, he was like, man, he giving it to me right now, you know, or he kind of frustrated you a little bit, got yeah. a couple buckets on you. Who was that one person? Oh, you man. know, we all we all get told. It's been a few. Stuff. It's been a yeah. few, bro. I mean, you yeah. play long enough, you're going to run into them. Uh, yeah. I think going back the furthest, um, probably Javon Carter, bro. Javon. Ooh. He was a dude that, and he and you know when I played him, that was when it was Paris Lee, Sterling Ooh. Brown, like they had yeah. some dudes, and Javon was kind of like that dude that you kind of forget about. Um, yeah, I you think, worried I about think, Sterling and Keith and everybody. Yeah, like that. yeah. So I think I think Javon was going back the furthest. I'm mean, not the furthest, but like as far as I can remember. And then the most recent would probably have been Trey Young. Um, I played Trey Young my junior year. At Oklahoma, and this was this was like Pete Trey Young, like twenty five and ten. Uh, Trey half Young. court, half court pull up. Yeah, pull up. yeah. So like, and plus, he was growing into that superstardom, so he was getting a favorable whistle. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, I think he was tough because one, he had range, yeah. and consistent range at that. You know, it was mm -hmm. consistent, and then he was quick with the ball. So it was like you couldn't really press him because then he was gonna get the whistle. Yeah, I'm back off him because he was gonna shoot the J. So like, I feel like he had me in a trick bag pretty much the whole game. Um, you know, respect to his game for sure though. Like at right. his size, he a little dude, man, and at mm -hmm. his size to be able to kind of translate what he was doing then to still be doing it now in the league. Um, I think that's tough to do, especially at like five ten maybe. You know, yeah. at, at the at the most. So I think you know probably them two. There's been a lot in between. Uh, yeah. But them the two I can remember for sure. Right, you know, they both in the league for a reason. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. Um, so, like this question, I hate to say starstruck, but was there ever somebody that you played against that had you like, like not like a wild moment, but had you like, oh, I'm gonna play him? Like, okay, let's go now. You know, so rather it be somebody that's like that got hype behind them that was ranked, or, yeah, you know, potential draft pick. You know, what I'm saying? Yeah. I know you said Trey Young, but like, yeah. was there somebody that had you like, okay, you know, what I'm saying, wow, let's get it. Yeah, I mean. I wouldn't say I've ever been starstruck mm -hmm. only because a lot of these dudes, I respect them, but they got to, I got to earn my own respect too. So I yeah. never looked at it like, mm -hmm. like, man, I just instantly giving them respect. It was more like competition. So I wouldn't say I was ever yeah. starstruck, um, mm -hmm. but I played Malik Newman. He was number one in the class. He uh, a monster. I played against Jalen Brown in Atlanta. So he was at home. Uh, I played against Denzel Valentine the year he got Player of the Year. Uh, the Trey Young. Um, who else? I mean, Jalen Brunson for two years. Yeah. Uh, I mean, man, being in the Big Ten, I played against so many dudes, man. The Yogi Ferrell um, at Indiana. I played against uh, Mo Wagner, even though I wouldn't matched up with him. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Carson Edwards, like, I mean, a lot of dudes, man, a lot of dudes where, like, you like, man, this dude's going to the league. And you know right mm -hmm. away, like, this dude's this gonna, dude going to be in the league. Uh, so I think, like, man, it's been a, it's been a long list. It's been a long yeah. list. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Man, that big team was loaded over there, huh? Yeah, it's loaded. Like, my, my freshman year, we played maybe six games straight where we played top 15 teams. And they was all on the road. So we played like Peter Jock at Iowa. 
Uh, we played Michigan, Michigan State, both on the road. We played Maryland with uh, with Mello, uh, Mello and and uh, Anthony Cowan. Yeah. So like you know, they, we played some good teams. I played against some real good players, especially the guards. So yeah, yeah it's been a long list. Okay, uh, you got a favorite coach of all time? Man, they've all helped me grow um, mm -hmm. in so many different ways. I mean, Ping was the guy that was like that mentor. He didn't care coming in, like the hype yeah. I had around me. Yeah. Um, he was like, you're going to earn it. You know, I played for Mike Mullins in the summer, AAU. He kind of got me ready for the college grind. Um, going back to middle school, I played for a guy, Tikus Pettigrew, who grew me as a player for sure. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my college coaches, when you get to college, it's kind of like, you either there or you not with them. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like when you in high school, you got more people that's invested in you and helping you grow. So I feel like if I had to pick, I would go with Ping. Yeah. Just because, I mean, Ping was that guy that had history. He He's seen it all. Mm -hmm. um, he he wasn't uh, he wasn't overwhelmed by the talent I had coming in, the hype I had coming in. He was more challenging Yeah. and uh, made me better for it. You know what I mean? I feel like if I never had played for Ping, I wouldn't be where I was now. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like I had, I would have to pick him just off that. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I was going to ask you, like, how was it actually playing for Ping? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. From the outside looking in, he's one of them coaches, like, you know, yeah, he was an older guy, but he still right. was going to be active in the game, get in your yeah. face and stuff like that. And so, like, just talk about how was it playing for him? Was it difficult at first, you know, because he's not an easy coach. No. Nah, you know yeah, he's definitely going to get into you. So, like, for you, <laughs> How did that, you know, how did he help you become the player you are now? Um, I mean, as a young player, like, you know, going back to what I was saying, like, as a young player, man, he didn't care about, you know, um, I mean, I had, what, three Division One offers before I got to Payne. Yeah. And he told me straight up, like, you ain't played a second for me yet, so I don't really care about all that. Um, and I think, you know, as, as a freshman, I played JV. Yep. Um, and then as a sophomore, I didn't really play at all, you know, um, until Paul Turner, who was ahead of me, he rolled his ankle, um, fortunately but unfortunately, yeah. and at a Christmas tournament. And I played that game, rest of that game, and started for the rest of my high school career pretty much. Yeah. But, um, I mean, he was a guy that was, you know, going to hold you accountable every day. You know, you was going to be at practice two, three hours until you got it right. Yeah. Um, and then if he trusted you, he, he trusted you. And that means, you know, if you earn that trust, it comes, it comes with a lot, you know, a yeah. lot of responsibility, um, especially between like, like me and Glenn, for example, the two guards, where it was like, if, if the team wasn't right, that means we wasn't right, you know, yeah. and that mean that, that and Ping was going to let you know. Um, but even, even beyond that, I feel like he helped me grow as a man, um, you know, as a guy who pretty much had everything that I wanted as a young player, um, he kind of let me know that, you know, the real world is more than that, you know, yeah. especially when you get up to the levels that I wanted to be at as far as playing in the Big Ten um, and then playing in the Horizon League uh, this past season. Everything that he taught me, I was able to apply it for five years beyond yeah. playing for him. Um, he taught me the value of winning, <clears throat> the value of character. Um, you know, it's a lot, man. I could go on all day about pain. Yeah. About what I learned from him. And it's more about what you learn in passing, like, you know, organically versus when he sits you down in the office and try to teach you something. Yeah. It's more about those lessons that you learn along the way that I still carry with me now. So, yeah. um, you know, it's sad that he's gone, but, you know, he, he impacted so many lives directly right. and indirectly that yeah. I feel like he's going to live on forever for sure. Right. Right. <laughs> um, for you, bro, you got a favorite dunk or a favorite highlight play of your career? Ooh. Uh, I mean, I never really think of it like, you know, like that. I mean, I didn't dunk on a, a, a good handful of people. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, nah, I really – I wouldn't say I got a favorite uh, mm -hmm. just because it's too hard to think of back, like, on a single play. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had some, like, game winners that I feel like I, I would probably get them. I would probably – rather have a game winner than a than a than a dunk um, Thanks. but i mean it's been it's like i couldn't like never i couldn't put my hand on finger on like one play now 
Okay, okay. Um, for you, bro, just talk about, you know, when and, like, how did you realize basketball is something that you want to do with your life? Like, when was it actually presented to you? And, like, around what age, what grade, or what moment did you realize, like, all right, I'm going to do this with my life? Yeah, I think – um I mean, I've been around basketball forever. I mean, I got an older brother that's 30. He played, mm-hmm. and my dad played. <clears throat> so I think from day one, I've always had, like, basketball in my blood. But yeah, I think, um, like, around middle school, man, like, when I started – and like I said, everybody, you know, when you were shorty, everybody kind of is still developing. But I think the stuff that I was able to do as a middle schooler, I think, kind of gave me that drive and that – that hunger, like, like, man, I could really do this. Yeah. And um, I think it kind of came to fruition when I started getting offers when I was in eighth grade, um, mm-hmm. which I feel like, you know, looking back at it, I wish I never had got those offers that early. Yeah. But when I did get those, it was kind of like, all right, it's time, it's time to, you know, flip that switch mm-hmm. and kind of, you know, you grind and you grind it now, it's time to grind more. Um, because the one thing that I never would want to do was have people catch up to me as a young as a young player. Right. Um, and I think when I got to high school, that's that's why I ended up going to St. Joe's. If you know, to, to kind of have a challenge mm-hmm. um, on and off the court. And then you know, as it went on, I think I just I mean I've always taken it serious. Um, basketball is pretty much the only sport I ever played. Yeah. Um, but I think once I started getting offers from colleges, it was kind of like that dream was getting closer at 14, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, yep. So it was something that I was like, all right, I got to, from 14 to 18, when I graduated in high school, like, I got to keep progressing. Yeah. So I, you know, I would never want to take a step back. So I think, you know, I would say, like, right around 7th, 8th grade was when I was like, it's time to flip that switch. Okay. Respect, respect. Um, for you, bro, in your life, what was something that you had to overcome in your life, you know, that might have yeah. been, that people don't know about that you ever, you know, because, like, us the outside, we don't know what y'all go through. You know, what I'm saying your personal life. Right. You know, we just see the okay. He played college ball. He, you know, what I'm saying stuff like right. that. But we don't know. You know, what I'm saying the tears, the sweat, and the pain right. that you go through. You know, so what's right. something that, you know, that you had to overcome in your life that you proud of today? That yeah, I mean, you, the man you are now. I mean, once again, like that, that's a pretty long list. Um, yeah. A lot of personal family stuff, yeah. uh, off the court stuff, but. I would say having two surgeries in the span of, of pretty much a year. Um, yeah. I had an ankle surgery that pretty much nobody ever knew about because I had that in the off season, and I was yeah. able to come back by the beginning of the following season, which would have been my junior year. Um, I had an ankle surgery then, and I was able to come back from that. It was pretty much a minor surgery, but I was able to come back from that. And then my junior year was that first year that I was in the rotation, cracked the rotation. I was playing well. That was when I played, you know, when we went to Oklahoma, I played well. And then in February of that, of that season, so right before the conference tournament, I partially tore my right quad tendon, and that put me out pretty much a season and a half. So Man. I was out that off season. I came back when I was a senior. I was a captain. I started, like, the first two or three games, and I just never could overcome that that pain that I was feeling, you know, yeah. post, post-surgery. So that's how I ended up shutting it down and getting that medical red shirt for what would have been this past season at Wright State. Um, and I think, you know, regardless of, of my stats or whatever at Wright State or whatever would have happened, I think that personally that helped me grow more than anything yeah. else because I was out for a year and a half. Pretty much a lot of people wrote me off mm-hmm. um, in recruiting. Everybody pretty much questioned my health, um, pretty much questioned what I could do at, mm-hmm. you know, at, at where I was coming out of that surgery, having a year off of basketball. Yeah. And uh, Wright State kind of took a chance on me, like, you know, we believe in what you did in your four years, so we want to bring you on. We need a guy like you to come and lead us. And I came into a team with three seniors who had been there and with that coaching staff thousand point scores you know what I mean and they kind of looked at me like you know we we going off of what you do yeah you know when I was that guy who was kind of a spearhead for a team that won a lot of games mm-hmm. um, and for me I, that's more rewarding than winning and being on top from the beginning right. I think I kind of came in from the bottom being a follower first yeah growing into being that leader 
and kind of growing back to having fun playing, um, being healthy, you know, was what I was thankful about. But, uh, you know, I think that that was probably my biggest hurdle mm -hmm. um, as far as, you know, basketball is just having to come back from an injury. Anybody who's had an injury and had to go surgery understands, like, that's that goes beyond putting the ball in the hoop. Like, that's yeah. a mental battle. That's a spiritual battle. You know, that's an emotional battle that, you know, when you win it, you really feel that. You really feel that. So, yeah. I think that, that, that would be it. Thanks. But you all good now, though, bro? You all healthy yeah. right now? Yeah, sir. Yeah, I'm good now, yeah. Okay, okay, good, good. Um, For you, bro, talk a little bit about, you know, the differences between playing high school ball to college ball. What were some of the things that you had to pretty much learn on yourself, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of took you by shock when you transferred to that college life? Yeah. Like, a lot of my homies said, man, bro, that college ball is no joke. Yeah, no, nah, you know, like really, the study hall, the yeah. practice, the weights, yeah. the film, the they said it's a long day and you're doing the constellated conditioning yeah. and stuff like that. So like for you, bro, what was something that kind of took you off guard that you had to get adapted to with the college life? Uh I mean that schedule, I mean that schedule is real. Um yeah. especially because, you know, like as far as time management, man, that's something that you know, a lot of high schoolers don't have. Mm -hmm. Because you, know, you just you just go on when you're in high school. Um but as far as like the the biggest differences is the the pace the the strength you need that physicality um, and playing in the Big Ten like if you're going from a, a high school level to a Power Five conference you're gonna always have you're basically gonna be an 18 year old playing with a grown man at that point um, yeah. and nobody can really prepare you for that um, nobody can prepare you for what what is coming in three months, two months, once you graduate high school. Um, because it's like, you know, the, the coach is not really going to coddle you. They're going to make sure you're where you need to be, but, you know, recruitment is constant, you know? So it's like, if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, there's going to be some freshman coming in that's going to replace you, or it's going to be yeah. some more that's going into the next year that's going to replace you. So um, I think just that accountability factor uh, that, that, that you got to grow into um, yeah. that, you know, you got two classes, you got one class and you got to go do extra work. You got to go do, you know, mm -hmm. go get shots up. You got to go do those things. So, you know, and I, I watched when Vic was talking to you and he kind of talked about that difference between college and the NBA. Yeah. And it's kind of similar um, from high school to college is like, you know, you don't have that same, you have structure, but it's not as tight as it is in high school, because in college, you kind of on your own in terms of, you know, if you want to do the right things or not. And then yeah. all that stuff comes to light. And, and if it's not tomorrow, it's the next day. So mm. I think just having to grow really quickly as a freshman yeah. uh, is the biggest difference. Then you grow into that that routine and you kind of get used to it. But mm -hmm. for sure, that first that first like month or so, you'd be, you be in the middle of it, it's tough. Okay. And then for you, bro, how was the recruiting process for you? You know, it could become some stressful to others and others yeah. enjoy it, you know. So for you, was it in general, was it good for you, you know, and what were some schools that were that you were talking to had interest in you and stuff like that? Yeah, so like like I said, like I kind of touched on it before. Mm -hmm. Our recruitment process started so early yeah. that it was both. It was good and stressful. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, like my first offer was DePaul. Then I got Purdue and Northwestern for, uh, like quickly after that. Um, but by the time I was a senior, I had probably 20 or so offers at, you know, mm -hmm. at one point. So I think it was, it was like, it was rewarding because, you know, your, your hard work is paying off. People want you at their school. Yep. Um, but for me personally, it's stressful because I had to deal with like five years of it, four or five yeah. years of it. Mm -hmm. Um, just hearing the same things over and over and trying to decipher like what's the truth and what's not. Yeah. Um, that's way tougher than, you know, who got the nicest facilities, who, you know, yeah. who got, who got the nicest campus is, is who really believing in you. Um, who really want to see you do the best you can do. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, that was probably the stressful part. It's just like the constant, you know, trying to figure everything out, um, you know, but, but, I would never – it's a good problem to have. It's basically – it's a good problem yeah. to have. It's like yeah. you know, a, lot, a lot of people wish they could be where – in a position that I was in. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that you got to be grateful for and also embrace it and, and kind of take it as it comes. I think um, when I was going into my fifth year, it was easy because yeah. I, I had learned so much from them prior, 
years of recruitment that I kind of knew what I wanted, knew what I was looking for. Yeah. I was able to, and plus I was 22. So like, yeah. you know, I was able to cut through all the small talk, you know, and yeah. just kind of say, okay, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I need. This is my position. Do you have it or do you not? Yeah. Um, so I think it was easy the second time around, but that first time around is always a little harder because you don't really know. Yeah. Talk about staying home, bro, playing for Northwestern. You know, what ultimately led to that, you know, I know you kind of hit on it, you know, Northwestern probably was a school, you know, that needed you, yeah. you know, for the team. Yeah. So, like, just for you, bro, how was it staying home and playing, you know, and going probably 30, 45 minutes away from, from the crib, yeah. you know, to play play home? You know, you said y'all went to the tournament and stuff right. like that. So, how was it, man? How was the Northwestern, North, Northwestern experience? Yeah, I mean, it was a blessing, man, to, to stay home. Um, yeah. As a junior in high school, like, when I picked Northwestern, I would have picked it no matter where in the country it was. Yeah. And I think, one, because I knew if I graduated from Northwestern, I was pretty much set for life. Um, but from the basketball standpoint, because um, I was recruited by the old coaching staff that was there. Yeah. And then when, when Collins and, and, and his staff got there, they recruited me. It was a whole different energy and a different vibe yeah. Yeah. that I kind of aligned with. Um it was kind of like more of a, a, a hunger, uh, kind of like a chip on my shoulder type of vibe. And I was like, man, this is what I need because at coming out of high school, like that's, that was how I was coming out. Like, man, I got a chip on my shoulder. Um, I'm a winner. I want to go win wherever I go. Um, and it was kind of like a perfect storm, man, to have that academics, to have the Big Ten basketball yeah. and then to be at home. Um, I think it was kind of like a perfect storm. And then I had guys coming in where that was already there that would have made that transition easy, like Vic and Scotty. Yeah. I mean, they were they were my guys. You know, I played against them twice a year in high school. So, nope. um, you know, to have, to have them there to kind of lead me um, and just get me through that first year and that, that experience, I think I was grateful for that. Um, and then just learning everything I learned along the way. You know, I think, yeah. I think that that kind of helped me grow into where I am now, too. Facts, facts. Uh, so this question, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot again, bro. <laughs> so you're going to create a five, Chicago okay. five, all time, to run with you to play street ball for money. Uh, all time, what, Chicago All time, five. Chicago five. Who you, who you rocking with? <laughs> uh, I'm probably going to go Isaiah. I see, definitely. D-Wade. Yep. So wait, we just talking Chicago or we talking? Yeah, like Chicago, right. Chicago. And <laughs> I get, I get, I give you, I give you KG, bro. I give you KG. All right, you know, girl, you know that KG. was gonna be next. You know he was gonna be next. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Isaiah, D Wade, KG, Anthony Davis. Yeah. And then uh, my three. Who will be my three? Like, do I want to go small? Do I want to go big? Uh, I mean, I could go, I could go Eagle Dollar if you give me Eagle Dollar. <laughs> I could go Eagle Dollar. I could go Sean Livingston. Yeah. I could go. Man, I probably, yeah, probably Eagle Dollar though, just just okay. to make it easy on myself, so I ain't got to yeah. keep trying to think about it. Yeah, I will probably go them five. I mean, it could be any. This could be so many different people though, but yeah, I probably okay. go them five. Okay. Now, can you give me a, another Illinois five? That's like not Chicago, or uh, no, you, can't, you can't do that. So, like, if I say if I say Livingston, yep. Uh, Doc Rivers. Oh, good one. Uh, if I go, let me think. D Rose. Yeah. I don't know how I didn't think of D Rose anyway, but D Rose. Uh, go way back where you get you like George Mikan or somebody <laughs> if I need a big <laughs> I need a big uh, it's then, a couple it's a couple bigs bro you got Cliff you got Jaleel yeah I know I know but you got Bari you got yeah, yeah Jabari yeah you got Frank Jabari. Kaminsky yeah Frank Frank was nice super nice um probably any of them honestly it, it, yeah. it, I had to write it down so I could like really think about it but yeah off the top of the dome is like to think of ten is is like low key kind of tough, but yeah, yeah. I get I give you nine, I, and I'll be the ten. Okay, <laughs> bet, 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 bet. Um, for you, bro, give me your top five all time rappers. All time rappers, uh, Wayne, Big, 
Kendrick, Jay Z, and Nas. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Now give me your top five current rappers. Top five current. I'll probably go Kendrick since he's current. J. Cole. Uh I'll probably go. Man, who do I even listen to right now? Uh, you on a little baby way, little baby hot right now, little bro. baby. I'll, I'll put little baby in there. I don't listen to a lot of the new stuff, but I do listen yeah. to them. Yeah. Um, then like I'll probably go like the game. Ooh. And like Jada Kiss. Ooh, okay, yeah, I rock but, with like, that but like that's my vibe though. Like I don't really yeah. listen like like the new new, but I do listen to little baby though for sure. Yeah. Yep. Um. All right, so now give me your top five NBA players of all time. Of all time? Yep. Uh, I'd probably go Mike, Bron, uh, Magic. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Kobe. Yeah. And Shaq. That's okay. My that's yeah. My right there. Yep. That's I, my five. Yeah, I, I rock with that five. Uh, I right, give me your favorite shoe of all time. My favorite shoe, man. My favorite shoe. I mean, I always mess with the with the Jays. Yeah. But my Which favorite one? shoe, like, I mean, probably like some, mm, like some Elevens. Yeah. Wells. But my favorite shoe that I've worn is a Kobe Four. Yeah. That's my favorite shoe that I've worn. I love yeah. Kobe Four. And the Kobe five, but Kobe four is probably my favorite shooter I've worn. Okay, okay. All right, bro. Chicago pizza or New York pizza? Chicago, easy. Chicago, okay. Chicago, yeah. yeah, we gotta make sure. Yeah, my Lumanatis. My Lumanatis vibe. Yeah. 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 Um, for you, bro, you know, I know you, you travel. You got a favorite city that you like playing in? Uh I mean, if it ain't Chicago, uh I played in the Garden in New York. I played I played in Madison Square Garden. I liked it there for sure. Yeah. But um, like AAU tournament wise, um, probably Dallas. Yeah. Dallas was real nice, and they they got like, you know, their gyms is like college gyms. Mm -hmm. A lot of people come out, so I I probably say Dallas. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite song right now, bro? That you bumping? Man, favorite song right now. Uh, I even got a favorite song right now. I probably even have a favorite song right. Now. I listen to so many different. I listen to so much music, bro. Like I like it's like. All right, all right so look, you you get in the car, bro. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> you about to make a move. First song you playing on the ox. <laughs> I'm about to make. It depends on what type of move it is. <laughs> but uh, let me see. Uh, favorite As a matter of fact, let me do this for you. All right. You in the gym, y'all y'all working out in the gym. Coach say play some music. What you bumping? You in the gym. So you got you know what I'm saying? Everybody vibe different, but I would think that you would turn on something yeah, to get you going. Everybody, everybody I mean like right now, I was, I just was listening to that new dog. Yeah. He got some bangers on there. Um but if I had to pick one song though, ooh, one song probably be like some old like some like some Jay Z. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like. I like. I don't know, bro. That's, that's tough. One song. Yeah. That's tough. I don't know. Like I can't. Cause I, I I just listen to so much stuff, bro. Like I can't. Yeah. Okay. I respect that. Um. You know this question right here, bro. Is what was some advice that somebody gave you that you would give to the younger generation, rather they be hoopers or just the younger kids in general? Just some advice yeah. that worked out for you. Uh, I mean, I've heard so many good things that I carry now. Um, but the first, one of the first things my dad, my dad actually said to me, man, was was always stay hungry and humble. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty cliche, but he was the first person that I heard it from. <clears throat> and it was especially during the time that that hun being staying hungry and humble was was big for me. And I say that to the younger generation mainly because, you know, obviously social media was big when we was in middle school, high school, but it's way bigger now. Yeah, and it's easier for a kid to get caught up in positive attention or negative yeah. attention. 
yeah. uh, now. So I think, like, I would always tell the younger generation, stay hungry and humble because I always use Jalen Brunson as an example. As he was a guy who, when we were in seventh, eighth grade, kind of nobody really knew who he was. Yeah. Uh, like, we knew as players, we knew who he was. But at, by the time we were graduating high school, he was known as one of the top 50 players in Illinois history. So I think that he resonated with staying hungry and humble. Um, he got better every year. He led his team. He won. He went on to college and did the same thing. Yeah. And now he in the NBA doing the same thing. So I think staying the course is more important than what you're doing right now. Um, it's going to be more important than what you're doing tomorrow. If you stay yeah. in the course and you're getting better every day, um, you know, Kobe said it, it, you know, his his commercial just yesterday, you know, be better today than you were yesterday. Yeah. And so I think, like, staying hungry and humble, man, is like one of those things where no matter what, you never get too high or too low. Right. You always keep your head down, ten toes down, and you're working. Yeah. And, and the results are gonna come when they're supposed to come. You know, they, it ain't gonna be a microwave. You're gonna be you're gonna be baking in the oven for a little bit. Yeah. When they come, they're ready. So yeah. You know, I think that's one. And then the other one would be stay ready, so you ain't gotta get ready. Um, yeah. You know, that was something that I feel like I kind of embodied when I, like I told you, when I wasn't playing my sophomore year in high school, but I stayed ready. And same thing my junior year in college. You know, you just stay ready. You know, stay ready. If you ain't playing, stay ready. Mm -hmm. If you're getting ready to play, stay ready. Because when that time comes, if you ain't prepared, then you're going to lose it. And it's going yeah. right to slip right through the cracks. So, yeah. Um, probably those two is probably the biggest things that I, I, I probably carry, you know, because they resonate on and off the court. Thanks. Thanks. Respect on that, bro. Um, So, last question I got for you, bro, is – uh. Who you who would you like to see on here next? You know, rather it's, if it's somebody I don't know that you suggest, yeah. you know, just plug me with them or you know. Yeah, whoever. I think uh, I think my boy Derek Parton would be a good guy. Honestly, um, mm -hmm. you know, he he been through a lot. You know, um, obviously, like I said, he played four years in college, but his four his one year was never the same as as the other ones. Yeah, um, and now he playing professionally, so he have a story to tell. Or, or get Glenn on here, man. Like, you know, yeah. Glenn is the same way. You know, he coming from a family where he had to pretty much show up. You know, yeah. he was, you know, he coming from that type of family. So, uh, one of them two, man, I think would be great. You had Vic on here already. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he had a story. But I, I think I think either DP or, or Glenn, man, I think they would be great people on here to have, to have to tell their story. Right. Like I said, I, I reached out to Glenn, you know, at that moment it was bad timing. But I'm definitely going to hit him back up. Yeah. To see, but if you can put me with the other other dude for sure, I'll definitely. Yeah, have yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know he. Is. Right. Yeah, I know he got time. He ain't doing that. Ain't nobody doing that right now. So I know he got time. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> hey man, I appreciate you for joining me, bro. It's definitely yeah, been no doubt. Having on here, yeah. bro. Yeah. Good luck. You know, if we have a season this year, stuff like that. Stay yeah. safe, bro. And uh, yeah. we'll chop it up. Yeah, no doubt. Appreciate you, bro. Take care. All right, bro. For sure.